Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Thursday, the 2nd of September. I do hope this finds you well. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We use one of the Bible readings for the day and a reflection on that reading. On a Thursday, the theme for prayer is community. And so we breathe. We remember we're in the presence of God and we pray. Blessed are you, creator of all things. The heavens adore you. Let the whole earth worship you. Let all peoples proclaim you. Let all nations obey you. Let us serve you in love and in peace. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our hearts and fill them with love. Come into our minds and fill them with peace. Come into our lives and fill them with light. Come into our days and fill them with glory. Come, Lord, and rule. Today's psalm is Psalm 145, your faithful servants bless you. I will exalt you, O God my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, there is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendour of your majesty and all your marvellous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. Your faithful servants bless you. And today we continue reading from the book of Proverbs and we've reached chapter 27, starting at the first verse. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let someone else praise you and not your own mouth, an outsider and not your own lips. Stone is heavy and sand a burden, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. One who is full loathes honey from the comb, but to the hungry even what is bitter tastes sweet. Like a bird that flees its nest is anyone who flees from home. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Do not forsake your friend or a friend of your family and do not go to your relative's house when disaster strikes you. Better a neighbour nearby than a relative far away. Be wise, my son, and bring joy to my heart. Then I can answer anyone who treats me with contempt. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if it is done for an outsider. If anyone loudly blesses their neighbour early in the morning, it will be taken as a curse. A quarrelsome wife is like the dripping of a leaky roof in a rainstorm. Restraining her is like restraining the wind or grasping oil with the hand. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The one who guards a fig tree will eat its fruit, and whoever protects their master will be honoured. As water reflects a face, so one's life reflects the heart. Death and destruction are never satisfied, and neither are human eyes. The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but people are tested by their praise. Though you grind a fool in a mortar, grinding them like grain with a pestle, you will not remove their folly from them. So more words of wisdom from the book of Proverbs. And uh, once again, I'm going to read a reflection, and this uh, reflection is written by Peter Greystone. The way of Jesus demands integrity in everyday mundane life, and that's where the book of Proverbs leads us. And with a little imagination, its message becomes startlingly relevant to the 21st century. The Proverbs speak of wine in chapter 23, of pledges in 22, and dark alleys in chapter 7. But actually, they are communicating with us about cannabis, payday loans and hookup apps. Some proverbs anticipate 2021 in an uncanny way. The advice about relationships in this chapter seems to anticipate our generation 
in which siblings and children may live a great distance away. We need to take friendship seriously. We learn from the COVID-19 lockdown the relative values of a friend who can be physically present and the image of a relation on Skype. Both are wonderful, but in an emergency, Skype can't leave a bag of groceries on the doorstep. Other advice about friendship seems timeless. True friends find ways to be open with each other without damaging the relationship, even when they need to be critical. Indeed, constant flattery is not a sign of friendship at all. Honest friendship makes you a better person and brings contentment into your life. The chapter recognises, however, that a friend who is trying too hard to be upbeat and gregarious can be a pain in the neck. Are you prompted to contact a particular friend for any reason today? So more timeless wisdom from Proverbs. And we continue in prayer. That the church may show its unity in Christ. That all churches may work together for the benefit of all peoples. That all movements towards unity may prosper. That divisions and conflicts may cease. That the world may find lasting peace. That none may hunger or thirst. Lord graciously hear us. That the barriers that divide may be broken down that we may live in unity, peace and concord, that we may come to mutual understanding and care, Lord, graciously hear us. And we continue praying for Afghanistan, for those who are fleeing, sanctuary, for those who are staying, safety, for those who are fighting, peace, for those whose hearts are breaking, comfort, for those who see no future, hope. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. So Lord be with us to guide us, within us to strengthen us, without us to protect us, above us to raise us, beneath us to uphold us, before us to lead us, behind us to guide us, ever about us today and evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for prayer again today. Do comment and uh, let me know you're here. And I do hope that you have a lovely day. And if you're able to, we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care and God bless. Bye for now.